for joining us and let us begin with our first and only story the 2016 election <laughs> or as you may know it I thought I wanted it to be over but now that it's over I wish it was still going on because it turns out the ending is even worse 20 fucking 16 <laughs> the results on Tuesday were, were a little different than what just over half the voters wanted we can now project the winner of the presidential race CNN projects Donald Trump wins the presidency Donald J Trump will become the 45th president of the United States. It's true. That happened. <laughs> it turns out, instead of showing our daughters that they could someday be president, America proved that no grandpa is too racist to become leader of the free world. <laughs> Look, papa, someday that could be you. <laughs> now, if you're like me, the implications of this have been hitting you in waves. One minute you're numb, and the next minute you realise that Donald Trump, this man, will soon have access to the nuclear codes. And then maybe you get distracted by daily life until it hits you again. Oh, our future president was supported by a former Grand Wizard of the Klan, and 60 million people voted for him despite that. And then maybe you finally manage to get some sleep, but then you wake up realising, oh shit, the Supreme Court. Because remember Merrick Garland? who the Republicans have refused to confirm all year. You know, the guy whom we asked you to choose a Supreme Court dog for. Uh, <laughs> you, you actually picked this one, by the way. Uh, we, we never announced it because uh, we figured that we would tell you when he was confirmed. Well, he's not getting confirmed, and that dog is dead now. <laughs> uh, no, actually, not really. She, she, she is fine, but she's not getting on the court. Donald Trump will fill that seat, and maybe more. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg is in her 80s. Uh, Anthony Kennedy is, is over 80. And there are other justices who've talked, bandied about the idea of, of retiring. Bottom line, Donald Trump is going to shape the Supreme Court for decades to come. Wow. That is one of those phrases you just assumed you would never have to hear. Like Vanilla Ice is picking up his Nobel Prize in physics. <laughs> or Henry Kissinger just came out with a line of skinny jeans. <laughs> They go with everything. <laughs> now, it has been wave after wave of nausea all week. I woke up on Thursday feeling fractionally better, but then I turned on the TV and saw Trump in the Oval Office with President Obama. And just look at the President's face there. He cannot believe what he's looking at <laughs> either. In fact, just listen to the actual audio in that room. is the new national anthem now. <laughs> you see? We're laughing. We're having fun. And then you remember, Trump's going to be in charge of the military, and leaders there do not know what to expect. They have seen Donald Trump's statements on the campaign trail, talking about waterboarding, talking about bombing with little regard to civilian casualties, talking about taking the oil in Iraq. All of these things potentially uh, very serious uh, violations of international law, violations of the Geneva Convention. Yes, our president-elect has at various times said he'd bomb civilians, loot oil and waterboard, which isn't a military strategy so much as the series of words that Donald Rumsfeld mutters so he can stay hard while he's masturbating. <laughs> and, and look, look, Trump won this election, by which I mean he won the Electoral College, which, for reasons I will never understand no matter how many times it's explained to me, is how things are done. And many people... It's important to remember, many people are happy to see him in office. Some are voters who think he'll bring jobs back and shake up Washington. Uh, others are happy simply because he isn't Hillary Clinton. Uh, and others, of course, are Vladimir Putin and Scott Baio. <laughs> but for the rest of us, we are faced with these same questions as a guy that woke up the day after a Vegas bachelor party, deep in the desert, naked, tied to a cactus and a dead clown. <laughs> Namely, how the fuck did we get here and what the fuck do we do now? Because Donald Trump will be president, and respecting democracy means accepting that. Although, there is one sentiment that I would argue takes that a little too far. 
the man hasn't even been a president for a day yet, all right? Let's give him a chance to be the president. Give Donald Trump a chance. We now have to give him a chance and see how he's going to okay. govern. The American people should give him a chance to govern because if he succeeds, we succeed. Now, in the broadest sense, I get that impulse. Hope for the best in the face of very long odds. It's like we're on a plane and we just found out our pilot is a wombat. <laughs> I don't like this, I don't understand how it happened, and I'm pretty sure we're headed for disaster, but what the hell? Come on, Batty, prove me wrong! <laughs> and, and the thing is, optimism... Optimism is nice if you can swing it, but you've got to be careful because it can feed into the normalization of Donald Trump. And he is not normal. He is abnormal. He's a human <laughs> what is wrong with this picture. <laughs> he sticks out like a sore thumb, and frankly, he even looks like a sore thumb. <laughs> so, so giving him a chance in the sense of not speaking out immediately against policies that he's proposed is dangerous, because some of them are alarming. Just some of Trump's promises, repeal and replace Obamacare. Build a wall along the southern border with Mexico and get Mexico to pay for said wall. Deport all 11 to 12 million undocumented immigrants in this country, including children. Appoint a special prosecutor to investigate and potentially jail Hillary Clinton. Temporarily ban Muslims and immigrants from terror-prone nations from coming into the United States. OK, OK, stop. Just stop. Because it sounds like you're reading the to-do list on Satan's refrigerator. <laughs> Which, of course, Satan no longer needs now that hell has frozen over. <laughs> and, and while some are arguing that Trump might not have meant all those things, that leaves us with two devastating options. Either we just elected a president who didn't mean a single word he said, or we elected one who did. And it's impossible to know which one. Earlier tonight, he did his first major post-election interview, and he was asked about Obamacare, which, remember, he had labelled a disaster. When you replace it, are you going to make sure that people with preconditions are still covered? Yes, because it happens to be one of the strongest assets. You're going to keep that. Also, with the children living with their parents for an extended period, we're going to. You're going to keep very that. much try and keep that. Oh, okay. So uh, get ready for a barely changed version of Obamacare <laughs> called Trump Care, which sounds like a health care plan where doctors feel your breasts for lumps whether you ask them to or not. <laughs> but, but by the way. Don't get complacent that he is going to keep those aspects of Obamacare. He might change his mind on that again. Trump is like a magic eight ball. Every time you shake him, he gives you a different answer. And sometimes the answer is just big league or that's somebody on my daughter, right? <laughs> so, so we have to take all of Trump's promises seriously. And the truth is, they were not all universally bad. For instance, he ran on a promise to drain the swamp cracking down on corruption and ending the reign of Washington insiders, which sounds great. So let's try and be positive for a moment. What are the early signs on that? Some of the potential cabinet members that are being reported by CNN that are under consideration, Rudy Giuliani, Newt Gingrich, Chris Christie, Reince Priebus. Right, so that's the longtime head of the RNC, a former speaker who entered Congress in 1979, a former mayor turned professional arsehole, and a man whose name is more synonymous with scandal than Shonda fucking Rhimes. That is so swampy, you're gonna need to swap out Air Force One for one of those shallow bottom boats with a big fan on the back. And the thing is, it actually makes sense for Trump to appoint people with significant experience in government. Until a few days ago, the highest office he'd ever held was on the 26th floor of a shitty building on Fifth Avenue. <laughs> but some of the people he's bringing in are horrifying. His transition team includes people like Ken Blackwell, who has argued that homosexuality is a choice. And he's named Myron Ebel to lead his EPA transition team, making him a front-runner for administrator, despite this. The whole case for global warming, I believe is silly, and I believe the vast majority of scientists think it's silly. And therefore, I'm a little bit embarrassed that I waste my time on a silly issue. OK, well, just first of all, the vast majority of scientists believe humans are contributing to climate change. And secondly, this man does not have a science degree. He wouldn't even be qualified to head the agency of baking soda volcanoes. <laughs> so how the fuck did we get here? Well, clearly, there are many possible answers to that question, uh, including uh, misleading forecasts that bred complacency, uh, a flawed candidate who failed to appeal to white, rural and working-class voters, and, and this is worth repeating, deep racism and or indifference to it. 
And for those, including us, who were shocked by Tuesday, we're going to be examining all of this for years. But for tonight, let, let's look at just one narrow element that may have helped bring us here, because it will be important going forward, and that is our media. Specifically, how a system that is supposed to catch a serial liar failed. And I'm not just referring to mainstream TV news, although some did wait far too long to take Trump seriously, giving him billions of dollars worth of free media. Uh, CNN, for instance, sometimes ran his speeches almost in their entirety. And their president, Jeff Zucker, now admits that might not have been such a great idea. I'd say that if we made a mistake last year, it's that uh, we probably did put on too many of his uh, campaign rallies in the in those early months, uh, un, you know, unedited and, and just let them run. And I think in hindsight, we probably shouldn't have done that as much. Yeah, it turns out hindsight, much like the year we're all now desperately looking forward to, <laughs> is 2020. <laughs> and and that, is, that is not to say that there wasn't some great coverage of Trump in this election from outlets like The Washington Post and The New York Times, even CNN eventually pivoted and began correcting Trump in lower third graphics, such as Trump, I never said Japan should have nukes, parentheses, he did. <laughs> and that is good journalism. If I gave a speech saying I'm the sexiest man alive, it would be fair to tag that with parentheses, look at him. <laughs> now, the, that's, that's a mean joke to laugh at, but the problem is, the problem is, the impact of corrections like that, which may have sunk a candidate in another era, was compromised because there is no longer a consensus on what a fact is. Trust in mainstream media outlets has been falling, and people can choose to get their news from echo chambers that validate their views. And there is nothing inherently wrong with media that has a viewpoint. This show has a viewpoint. We fact-check everything we say, but I don't pretend to be neutral on things like criminal justice reform. I'm for it. Uh, Coldplay. I'm against it. <laughs> uh, or DeWalt's Ladders. They're a seamless blend of style and performance. <laughs> Walking up one is like ascending to heaven on a golden cloud. <laughs> I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just a fan. <laughs> but a healthy media diet has to be broader than that. And unfortunately, the way that many of us consume news now is micro-targeted. The majority of Americans, 62%, say they get their news from social media. According to Pew Research, 44% of all adults say they get news specifically from Facebook. That's true. News is now one of the three things that we get from social media, the other two being our entire sense of self-worth and pictures of shaved alpacas. <laughs> and, and fake facts circulate on social media to a frightening extent. You may have seen this quote from Donald Trump online about Republicans being dumb. He never said that. It's not true just as it's not true that the Pope endorsed Trump, because of course he didn't. But that story was shared almost a million times, which is absurd. Everybody knows the candidate the Pope endorsed was Joe Exotic. <laughs> they have very similar views on deregulating tiger preserves. Please share this news a million times. <laughs> but there is now a whole cottage industry specialising in hyper-partisan, sometimes wildly distorted clickbait. Uh, BuzzFeed News researched sites like Addicting Info on the left and uh, Freedom Daily on the right, both of which have over a million followers on Facebook, putting them in the same range as Anderson Cooper 360, and found that some of them were publishing many viral articles containing flat-out falsehoods. Over two weeks, 38% of news on some Republican-leaning Facebook pages was partly or completely false, compared to 19% of news shared on some Democrat-leaning Facebook pages. Yeah, and before you say, well, Republicans are twice as bad, 19% is still terrible. And it is not news that there is misinformation on Facebook. Just look at the relationship status, it's complicated. <laughs> the accurate version of that would clearly be, in three weeks I'll be single, but I can't admit it yet. <laughs> but these sites can warp your views pretty fast. Your news feed may have been full of The Times and The Post stories about Donald Trump's actual scandals, but many Americans logged onto Facebook every day and saw shit like this. And this cesspool of nonsense would be a problem anyway, were it not for the fact that one of the people enthralled to it is our future president. Back in March, he claimed that a man who had rushed the stage at one of his rallies had ties to ISIS, something that had circulated online and had been found to be untrue. And when that was pointed out to him, this was his response. There's no ties to ISIS for this man, no law enforcement official, and that this video that you linked to appears to be a hoax. What do I know about it? All I know is what's on the internet. 
okay. Okay. Okay, here's the, here's the thing. Being on the internet is not a high bar for accuracy. If I edited Wikipedia to say that Diane Weist's real name is Diane Frosted Mini Weist, <laughs> our next president would believe that to be true. In fact, during the campaign, Trump routinely used his platform to share wildly incorrect information, and even fellow conservatives tried to point out how irresponsible this was. You tweeted out that, um... Whites killed by blacks, these were statistics you picked up from somewhere, at a rate of 81 percent. And that's totally wrong. Um, whites killed by blacks is 15 percent. Hey, Bill, Bill, am I going to check every statistic? I've got millions and millions of people. You got it. You got a presidential contender. You got to check. Millions of people. You know what? Fine. But this came out of radio shows and everything else. Okay, 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 okay. okay. I got it from radio is maybe the weirdest nonsense explanation <laughs> I've ever heard. It's like if someone said, this sandwich tastes weird, and you said, but I found it in a hole. <laughs> if there's something wrong with it, then what was it doing sitting in a hole? <laughs> and that is the evil genius at work here. Weird conspiracy bullshit has always been bubbling under the surface, but Trump was the first major candidate to harness and fully legitimize it. And it's obvious in hindsight. He came along and told millions of people every crazy email you've ever forwarded was true. And that, at least in part, is why he will be our next president. And to their credit, some Republican lawmakers were calling him out on this during the campaign. I'm gonna tell you what I really think of Donald Trump. This man is a pathological liar. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He was right. He was just right. But before you think Republicans might now stand up to Trump, I will remind you that by the end of the campaign, Ted Cruz, like many others, not only said he'd vote for Trump, but was doing this. Hi, this is Ted Cruz calling. Uh, I was calling to encourage you to come out and vote on election day. Wow, that is hard to watch. <laughs> Uh, this is Ted Cruz just calling to remind you to vote for a man who insulted my wife and said my dad helped kill JFK. Anyway, uh, life has no meaning. Thank you. I want to die. Uh, take care now. God is dead. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye. So there is very little holding Trump back. And remember, in January, he will be sworn into office. And there is another wave of nausea for you. It hits you in small ways and large, doesn't it? For instance, had you considered the fact that uh, portraits of Trump are going to be hanging in our airports? Uh, or that the man who disparaged a Gold Star family will now be expected to comfort the families of fallen soldiers? And maybe you've tried to make yourself feel better fantasizing that he might Google how much does the president get paid, get depressed and then resign. <laughs> but that is when you remember Mike fucking Pence, who might be even worse, because he looks like he's from the 1950s, but he thinks like he's from the 1650s. <laughs> oh, what's that you say? Her pregnancy was terminated before birth? Well, clearly she's a witch. Hold a funeral for the fetus and throw the mother in a lake. <laughs> and I know... This is all depressing, but it does bring us back to the important question, what the fuck do we do now? And for the record, the answer is not move to Canada. <laughs> Literally, the only excuse to ever migrate to Canada is if you were born there originally, it's springtime, and you are a goose. That's it. <laughs> that is it. No, instead, we're gonna... We're going to need to stay here and fight, and not just politically in four years when he's up for re-election, but constantly monitoring legislation as it moves through Congress and fucking voting when your legislators come up for re-election in two years. But that is still below the barest minimum of what is going to be needed, because for the last eight years, we've had a president we could assume would generally stand up for the rights of all Americans. But that is going to change now. So we're going to have to actively stand up for one another. And it can't be just sounding off on the internet or sharing think pieces or videos like this one that echo around your bubble. I'm talking about actual sacrifice to support people who are now under threat. So, if you can afford the time or money, support organisations that are going to need help under a Trump administration. Uh, for instance, if you're concerned about women's health, donate to Planned Parenthood or the Center for Reproductive Rights. Uh, if you don't believe man-made global warming is a silly issue, uh, donate to the National 
uh, Resources Defence Council. If you don't think refugees are a terrorist army in disguise, donate to the International Refugee Assistance Project. Oh, and uh, also, given these guys' track record, I would also recommend donations to the NAACP Legal Defence Fund, the Trevor Project for LGBTQ Youth, and the Mexican American Legal Defence and Education <laughs> Fund. Because that last one would be perfect if your compassion for Latinos goes beyond, say, I don't know, occasionally eating a fucking taco bowl. And, and do check the box for recurring donations, if you can, because this is not a short-term problem. And also, just, just for a dash, I'll give you just a dash of fun here, I will point out, if you have relatives who supported Trump, you can give money in their name. So, <laughs> consider your holiday shopping this year done. Happy holidays, Nana. The Trevor Project thanks you. <laughs> and there is there's one more group that I would single out for help here, and that is the press. Because, as we've seen, Trump is a masterful denier of both reality and responsibility. He's a man who would kick you in the nuts and then tell you that your penis did it. <laughs> so the press is going to face challenges. Not just because Trump's chief strategist is Steve Bannon of Breitbart News, but also because of yet another promise that Trump made. If I become president, oh, do they have problems. They're gonna have such problems. I'm gonna open up our libel laws so when they write purposely negative and horrible and false articles, we can sue them and win lots of money. We're gonna open up those libel laws. Okay. Well, first, there is no federal libel law for Trump to open up. <laughs> And as many supposed recipients of Trump's charitable gifts might tell you, you can't open something up if it doesn't exist. <laughs> but, but that attitude of punishing the press is genuinely worrisome now that he is going to be president. So instead of sharing partisan memes you found on republicgoofs.redneck and democrappy.cuck, <laughs> you need to support actual journalism by buying a subscription to outlets like The Times uh, or The Post or your local newspaper or donating to groups like ProPublica, a non-profit which does great <laughs> investigative journalism. The point is, if we don't get actively involved to at least mitigate Trump's damage, things will not be OK. And, yes, the sun will rise each day, but the continuing rotation of the Earth should not be your baseline expectation of American society. <laughs> and I, I just need to ask you one more thing. It is going to be too easy for things to start feeling normal, especially if you are someone who is not directly impacted by his actions. So keep reminding yourself, this is not normal. Write it on a post-it note and stick it on your refrigerator. Hire a skywriter once a month. <laughs> Tattoo it on your ass. <laughs> Because a clan-backed misogynist internet troll is going to be delivering the next State of the Union address. And that is not normal. It is fucked up. And the only thing that gives me one degree of comfort is that I think part of Trump might be realising that now, too. Just look at his face after meeting with Paul Ryan <laughs> and getting a glimpse of what this job actually entails. Here is the genuine audio from that moment. I feel the same. Look, I don't know what happens from here. And this is actually our final show of the year. And normally on our last show, uh, we mash up elements from the season and we dance around in the studio. But that doesn't really seem appropriate tonight. Not just because of the election, but because 2016 has been an uncommonly shitty year. From the ongoing crisis in Syria, to Zika, uh, to Ryan Lochte being a douche... <laughs> to a seemingly endless string of celebrity deaths, including just this week, Leonard Cohen. So, we've put something together about how awful this year has been. We started it a little while ago, but it now feels more prescient than ever. Because even though this year still has seven weeks left, I'm calling it early, 2016 has been the fucking worst. <laughs> so, thank you for watching, and please enjoy this tribute to a truly terrible year. Let's face it, 2016 has been one calamity after another. And while it will be remembered for the giant calamity we all just witnessed, we shouldn't lose sight of the other multiple ways this has been a shitty year. If we could erase 2016 off the calendar, we'd be perfectly good with me. Pretty rotten year. I think most people would, would admit that. It totally blew. It was awful. This world is feeling scarier. It's feeling a little colder. For EU, it was a really crappy year. The whole Brexit was kind of a mess. 
It's just a lot of like hatred to a lot of groups. I think I think that's like been the staple of this year. Syrian refugee crisis, pretty terrible. Lots of uh, sexism being very blatant. I think it's absolutely disgusting what the city of Flint did to to his residents. The New York Jets suck. The Yankees missed the playoffs. I didn't like Kevin Durant going to um <laughs> going to Golden State. <laughs> That was a chicken shit move. Some asshole stole my watch in Miami. I got broken up with, so that was pretty shitty. I had a girlfriend for three and a half years. She broke up with me about two months ago. My landlord is a piece of shit. I met Bruce Willis here like a week ago and they asked him for a picture and he said no, so that made me feel bad. My son is hitting puberty and he's being a real pain in the ass. I got um, all mold of my dog on my birthday, so that was like the cherry on top of like a shitty year. Menopause. Never forget Harambe. Rombe's out there listening. He took shots for us. We should take shots for him. Too many deaths. Prince. Prince is my man. I miss Prince. Prince, I mean, that was just... I think the worst is the David Bowie's death. David Bowie. What the fuck? Bowie? That was my big one. Five dog, man. Come on, man. Shout out to, to Q-Tip, man. Tribe Called Quest. I grew up on that. Muhammad Ali, that was one of the biggest. What he represents for black people in America, that's a huge deal for me. Oh, like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Oh, God. Gene Wilder. Alan Rickman, fucking Snape, dude. Oh, yeah. 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 This year did suck. Fuck 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Bad year. Shit year. 2016. It's for you. Fuck 2016. Fuck it a lot. Fuck 2016. I'm fuck Donald Trump. Fuck 2016. CNN will let me say this on New Year's Eve, but get fuck 2016. Fuck 2016. What is this, mayonnaise? <laughs> fuck 2016. Fuck you, 2016. <laughs> fuck you, 2016. 2016? Fuck off. 2016? Falls well below my standards of quality. Fuck 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Hey, 2016. Go punch yourself in the dick. Fuck this year. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck you, John Oliver. Hey, 2016. Fuck you. And hey, 2017. Fuck you, too. I hate you already. Fuck, fuck you, 2016. 2016. You're asking me. Fuck 2016. Fuck 2016! 2016, from the bottom of my heart, go fuck yourself. Fuck you, 2016. Fuck you. That's our show. Thanks so much for watching. Let's all try harder next year. Good night.